In this tutorial we're going to have a look at recording in QuickCube. So now that we've got our fixtures patched and laid out on our home screen, we're going to first of all look at recording groups on the console. On the left side of the console you've got your multifunction faders. If you toggle over to group mode using the button on screen or the button on your console, you'll find you get some auto groups. So you'll by default will have a group per each different type of light you've patched. All your spots, all your washes, all your conventionals and so on there. If you want to make your own custom groups, for example, just my left hand side ellipsoidals here, I can simply select those fixtures on my screen here, select my record button and then hit the select button below one of the flashing group buttons here that's going on and off. So if I want group number 6 to be those left hand side ones, I select group 6 and that group's now recorded. The indicator is illuminated now, show me there's something on that group. If I bring the fader up, you can see that group's recorded there. If I wanted to do the same with the right hand ones, simply select them, so you turn green there, record and select a flashing select key at the bottom of the fader there. So that's recording groups. If you want to remove or make a change to a group, simply use the action menu on the top right, action, on there, rename or remove that group, like so, and the group is then deleted. For recording onto your playbacks then, we can select fixtures either using our touch screen or in fixture or group mode. So if I bring on my playback 2 here or group number 2, that's going to bring on my R2 washes like so. And you can see it's automatically selected them on my screen when I bring up the group fader there. So I can now go to colour, I could set a colour for those R2 washes there. I could go to position and I could simply position them on my back wall like so. Using your encoders if you're on a quick queue console. I can then go back to my home screen, I could select some other fixtures, this time I'm going to select some of my ellipsoidals here, just four of them like so, I can go to intensity, bring up the intensity for those four fixtures there, go back to home and you can see those fixtures are on, if I now want to record that to one of my multi-function playbacks in Q mode, I can toggle to Q, select record and again click one of the buttons below a fader that's flashing on and off, show me it's empty, click there, hit clear and that's now recorded onto my playback, like so here. With these playbacks on the left hand side in queue mode, they can only be single queues, there can't be chases or queue stacks. If you want a chase or a queue stack, we can come down to our 10 playbacks at the bottom of the screen, where we can record chases, queue stacks or single queues. We'll now look at how you can record a chase in quick queue. First of all, we're going to go back to group mode, and we're going to bring on a group of fixtures. So let's go for our Maverick MK2 spots here, just an open white like so, we're going to go record and select an empty playback at the bottom of my screen. I'm now going to press clear so they go off. I'm going to bring on a second group of lights, my R2 washes, record, select this time the same playback. I've now got two cues recorded onto that playback. Clear, bring up a group of different lights, my ellipsoidals again, record, select, clear. And again, my fourth group there, my pars, record select and clear. I've now got four cues recorded onto this playback and in quick queue if you're in live mode this will default to a chase as it tells you above the fader there. If you press and hold on the screen we'll open up the chase window and it will show you your four cues. If I now run that playback fader up to full we should find that that chase is now running as you can see there and as you can see the lights in the visualizer. When you press and hold your playback legend here and you get this chase window up you'll see you've got controls for the chase. On your encoders you've got chase speed and chase crossfade. You can also use the tap to time key on the right hand side there to tap to time your chase. If you select it and press your pause key on the right here, we'll stop the chase where it is. You can use the pull out to quickly then jump to a particular queue, pull out and jump into Q1 and restart my chase. You've got chase direction at the top of the window, so backwards, bounce, or random order. Inside this chase window if I go to my menu button I can very quickly change this chase into a more theatrical style queue list or queue stack. You can see once I've hit that button there the chase has stopped running. To step through my queues I now select and use my play button here to step through those four queues. If you want to reorder a queue simply hold the box with the six dots here, click and hold and drag to reposition your queue and that will renumber your queue as you can see there. Your queues will always run in sequential order. You can name your queues using the action menu, action on there, rename. 
Q1. You can set fade times for your cues. Press and hold in the fade box and you can set your fade in time. You can also specify a separate fade out time and fades for non-intensity attributes. So that's going to be your position, colour or beam attributes. So things like pan and tilt, uh, red, green, blue and gobos there. We hit OK and that fade time is now applied to that particular cue there. In each of your cue stacks you do also have a play and a stop key or your pause button at the top of the window as well. They have the same function as if the cue stack was selected and you used a play and pause key at the bottom of the window there. For more programming tips on QuickQ, check out some of our other QuickQ tutorials.